Engaiwi, Engamana, Engareo, Ero Rangatirama, Tina Koto, Tina Koto, Kyura Koto Katoa. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for giving me your time um, and the opportunity to present a little piece of work that uh, we've been doing on your behalf. Um, my name's Ganesh, I'm Research Director at Burl. I'm a first generation New Zealander. I actually was born and bred here in Wellington. I haven't travelled far, so for those who have come from afar, welcome to my home. Uh, we haven't quite put on our best weather for you, but it's, believe me, it's better than it can be here. Um, also, believe me, it can be way much better. Um, I suppose the uh, first thing just to note, uh, for those who don't know, Bill, despite some um, misconceptions, is not a government department. We are not funded by government or ministry. Uh, we are purely private and um, we live on the basis of the work we do. Uh, we believe we must be doing something right because we've survived 63 years in business. Um, so that, that's, I suppose, is our credibility. Uh, I'd like to just acknowledge uh, my colleagues at Bill for putting together this piece of work, and in particular Merwin Groom, who was the, the person who did most of the grunt work on this. Um, and it was a little bit challenging exercise. I suppose the immediate challenge that we found is that um, uh, cards on the table, we're a living wage employer and quite proud to be that, and I'll say that our interests are probably at the other end of the spectrum in terms of the salary, salary scale than some in this room. Um, and we saw, and there was a few murmurings around the, around the team about why we should be interested in helping doctors who are earning way much more than they would ever, etc. You know the story. Um, but we can go into that discussion a bit later if you like. Uh, from a straight economic perspective, there is quite a challenge for economists to explain why is this the stark salary differential given that there's free, well, we are one labour market in, this, in the jargon between New Zealand and Australia, and all theory should say that they basically should be pretty close to the one salary for the same job across that labour market, uh, allowing for a few exceptions. OK, we'll have some allowances for remote work and a few other things and, and all of those sorts of things. But you know, there is some, get some significant... Um, issues for us boring economists to tackle, and then putting all of that aside, there is the consequences of having that large salary differential around attraction of good staff, retention of good staff, um, losses of staff, and all of those things, especially if we are in the, dare I say it, in the well-being game in New Zealand. How do we look after the well-being of New Zealanders if we don't value those who we put our lives trust in, for want of a better phrase. Um, so, without going too much further, um, we'll cut to the chase. As I've said already, it won't surprise you, and it didn't surprise us, that there's a, rel there's a salary differential between New Zealand and Australia for this particular occupation. Um, the thing that did surprise us and definitely did surprise me is the, the, the size of the differential. It's way bigger than what I had expected. Just as a rough rule of thumb, New Zealand salaries roughly about sort of 20 to 30% below Australia is sort of a ballpark rule of thumb. And we, you know, that's, and again, I can't explain it. We could, we could go into that question a bit later as well. but. That's where we roughly are, and I wouldn't have thought this occupation would be too far from that. But anyway, just in terms of what we're after, we are looking at the labour market, and there are intricacies of awards and agreements that we need to look at. Um, we tried to keep things simple, okay, so we're not going to go too far into all of the nitty-gritty of the different allowances and benefits that each of the different awards offer. But what we did do is combine up 
the allowances that are pretty close to universal across the various states or across the individual states and in New Zealand. So we were comparing apples with apples. We were going to compare like with like. So even though they said it was an allowance, if everybody got it, we lumped it into that salary number that we were trying to compare. Um, we did have a look at, and we have noted in purely qualitative sense, uh, to help with the narrative of those other non-salary benefits, um, just to, I suppose, flesh out the picture. And then also um, what we need to do is actually just have a quick look at the cost of living across in both areas, on one side of the Tasman and other, because there's the argument, well, we do know that salaries are higher in Australia because the cost of living is higher in Australia for certain things, and we sort of put that into the equation and just see if that justifies the differential or, not, or to what extent that may justify the differential. Um, cutting to the chase, step one, where do you start? Um, there's the, I suppose, there's the, I won't say the headline number, but there's the starting point in terms of where the differentials are. Um, the starting point for New Zealand in Australian dollars, okay, Every all the numbers here are in Australian dollars, just to convert and make the comparisons easy. In Australian dollars, the starting number for New Zealand is a, a little bit, it's pretty close to 153,000, okay, which is where we start on the left-hand left -hand bar. Um, and all of the others are all the various Australian states. Um, I shouldn't point, we did exclude or we didn't look at the smaller states, because they really did complicate the matters and they didn't really have comparable agreements and all those sorts of things. So we exclude Northern Territory, um, ACT and Tasmania um, and, and some others who can um, enlighten me on the intricacies of those particular areas can go down that route. But it was just, I suppose, would have spent a lot more time for very little extra information or very little extra for this. Um, picture. The Australians, in turn, this, this, the states, in terms of comparison to that 153,000 number for New Zealand, you're looking at a range from Victoria at just under 230,000 to Western Australia at about 295,000. So that's where we're starting from. And that's a pretty scary picture for me. In terms of the rough average, and there's an argument about whether we average all of those Australian states by the population in the Australian states or the number of doctors in the Australian states and all of those sorts of things, or do we take the median or the, the minimum or the maximum, but just even looking at that picture, you can see the numbers are not very favourable or attractive if you are looking at, do I work in New Zealand or do I work in Australia? Okay, the, if you take a... Just a simple average of those five Australian numbers, you get about $254,000. So you're looking at a number where Aust uh, New Zealand doctors are earning about 60% of the Australian average. Okay. So that's a pretty stark, dare I say, cost for the, the joys and wonderful benefits of living on this side of the Tasman. We have got a bloody good cricket team. Oh, yeah. We're number two ranked in the world. And where are the Australians? I think they're about five at the moment. It's a bit sad, isn't it? And who holds the Netball World Cup? Right, OK. So there's got to be... There are attractions on this side of the Tasman, but do they justify that? Then, well, as an economist, these, you know, we still do have you sitting in this room in New Zealand, so these, you know, I ask you, why do you stay here given that differential? So, OK, you're way above that number, but you're not all the start. Well, I don't know how many of you, but I would assume that most of you, or at least some of you, are not on that starting level. So where do we end up? So where do we end up? OK, and the actual... As you've got good eyes at the back, the vertical axis changes, the numbers on the vertical axis change, but the actual picture doesn't that much. 
Uh, so where do you end up? Well, the difference between also where you end up is the level, the amount of time it takes to get you to end up here. Because new, in New Zealand, as if you don't know already, there are 15 steps, 15 annual steps between step one and 15, so roughly 15 years to get from the previous picture to this picture in New Zealand terms. In Australia, the steps range between about 6 and 12 to get to the top. And again, um, oops, I haven't got the numbers. Oh, I've got the numbers somewhere. But the range from the top for the Australia, well, the New Zealand top in Australian dollars is about 227. Okay. Australians range from about 313 up to 384. Okay, so it's, yeah, it's not a nice story. Well, it's not a pretty story on pure salary numbers on their own. Um, and so to tell you in words, if you don't like the pictures, what you probably know already, but at least now you've got some numbers, uh, and you've got some numbers that haven't been given to you by your own uh, advisors. They are uh, numbers from, and, and I'm not being an advocate for your union, okay? It's up to you to decide what you're going to do with these numbers, but it's a pretty strong evidence base that there is a large discrepancy. Um, to me, you know, I can argue about whether the, the actual salary comparison makes a difference, but it's actually the story inside those salary scales that I find quite curious and actually quite uh, significantly, from my perspective anyway, quite a lot more important. One of them is that, that salary progression, as I've mentioned, in New Zealand is a lot slower. Uh, so you're talking 15 years versus sort of 6 to 12 years, and that's a quite a significant difference if you are in terms of an attractive um, career path. Um, OK, I'll, I'll live with being paid a lot less in my early days, but I would like a little bit of... Um, I suppose you want a little bit of gravy at the end or a little bit of excitement or enticement. Um, I suppose the... The interesting thing also from, well, from a boring economist perspective, throwing away the, the New Zealand-Australia comparison, um, if I just go back to that previous slide, is actually the, the dispar or not disparities, but the differences within Australia itself is actually quite different as well. So that throws away my economist hat about all the salaries should be roughly about the same because it's a pretty, you know, there is one labour market within Australia as within across Australia and New Zealand. So there's actually, again, there's a bit of a question mark about what's driving the differentials within the states between, say, Victoria and Western Australia. Um, and um, in terms of what we pick up is that there are lots of, add-ons and pluses within Australia with all the peculiarities within the different states in terms of their agreements. Um, Queensland, for example, 50% on top of base salary, which is pretty close to comprehensive, um, plus some allowances if you happen to be in Queensland but outside of Brisbane, so there's a whole lot of rural allowances. We've included that 50% that is pretty much for everybody. We've included that in the previous numbers. So that's comparing apples with apples. But there's the additions if you want to live outside of, or if you are needing to be enticed to live outside of Brisbane or reside or work outside of Brisbane, these extra allowances. Um, one would suggest that that, well, I don't know whether they may or may not be needed, but one would suggest they probably are. Um, and again, that's probably the marketplace working with a bit of, luck, hopefully. Um, similarly, and I'm not quite sure how we can, um, I suppose, explain this one, but the New South Wales one, another 17% in terms of special allowance across the board. I'm not entirely sure what that is, but it's there, plus a private practice allowance. Um, and there's a whole lot of ins and outs in terms of private practice availability and allowances, which just makes the picture just a little bit messy. But we've tried to include as much 
in the previous numbers as were, you know, pretty much comprehensive. So we lock that into the overall numbers to make them, as I say, comparisons with apples and apples. Um, to me, this is the this is the picture that really hurts. Um, so again, the, horror, the vertical axis is Australian dollars. And the New Zealand picture is that bottom line and the salary progression after 15 annual increments doesn't even get you to the bottom first step of the Australian ladder. Now, I have no ability whatsoever to explain that. I hope you can explain it. I love cricket, but believe me, <laughs> that's, that's, yeah, that, that, that is really is quite stark. Um, and that's, that's, yeah, and, and so you've got a, the increment, 15 years, you get there, and it's ongoing, but that's fine. Look at the increments in those Australian states, you know, a lot quicker, uh, so you're going up a lot steeper, and obviously, and they're starting from a lot higher. Um, some of them flatten out very early on, i.e. they reach that top step very early on, and then the question mark, obviously, is what do they do after that? Well, presumably, they move on to other management positions and have management allowances or units or something else. Uh, those opportunities may or may not open up for those there. Um, but, yeah, that's the that really is, to me... Uh, as I say, I expected a differential. I didn't expect that at all. And that really is, to me, um, pretty inexplicable. Um, yeah. I'll leave that with you just to, yeah, that, that's the one that really does. Oh, I understand we're below, and okay, we start a little bit late but we end up even below the first year of an Australian one. I don't believe we're that less trained or less less equipped or less skilled and all of those other things. Um, I just, what I presume is actually no one in New Zealand actually gets to that th number 15. By that time, they're long gone. <laughs> yeah. given, given my economics, you know, we're all rational, making rational decisions and all of that, but anyway... The other side of it, um, and, and all joking aside, the other side of it that does give me, I'll, I'll be honest with you, way more concern than the previous slide in terms of career paths, career opportunities and building a skilled workforce for the future, et cetera, et cetera. Um, the non-salary benefits for a occupation like yours, in my mind, is critical. Because bluntly, I mean, it's sort of, and I'm not going to compare my my career path with yours, but I'm not in this, I'm not in my job for the dollars. I would suggest that most of you are similarly not in the, your job for the dollars. It is a vocation. It is a passion. For some of you anyway, I'm generalising. To do that, though, what else do you have to have? You've got to be able to maintain your training, your knowledge, your skills, your experience. You've also got to be able to operate in at least a minimal stress environment. You've actually got to be able to take time out to recuperate, all of those sorts of things. This is where we're way behind. And to me, that's what worries me as a, for one of a consumer of your services. As an economist, that's actually interested in the well-being of the nation rather than just the dollars. Um, long service leave is critical. Yeah, I have a staff that, you know, of, you know, the jargon in terms of economics. You know, we've got to be innovative and creative and all of those sorts of things and productive. You know, there's no way they're going to be innovative, creative, and productive if they're stuck at, stuck behind a desk for 42 weeks or 45 weeks every year and so on, okay, we give them pay, but they, actually, they do need time out. They need, need to recharge their batteries. Tell them to, okay, you're not going to be creative by a, 
creative behind a desk. Go away, sit on a beach or sit on the banks of the Basin Reserve and think for a few days or weeks and then come back recharged and those sorts of things. Um, uh, so, yeah, long service leave, continuing medical education and the opportunities for private practice and to engage with others. Those things are, I would say, just as, if not more critical than that salary comparison. And that's where I, I was hoping that that previous slide was going to be explained by this one. And this is the one that really worries me, it, all joking aside. Um, and if we're serious about trying to attract and keep staff in this country, I think, and again, it's not, for, not up to me to tell you what to advocate for, but I'd be worried about that, pre, that other slide rather than the actual salaries, or probably actually both. Just to provide the context, um, cost of living, everybody says, oh, it costs more than to live across Australia than it does in New Zealand. Well, I say, well, actually, not a huge amount. Um, and in some places it doesn't. Um, it actually is less. Uh, so we did a bit of digging in terms of numbers and we sort of tried to do some comparative household spending budgets and weren't quite as successful as we could. But we did get some official statistics, household, uh, household expenditure survey numbers, both in Australia and in New Zealand. Um, we didn't use the nationwide average for expenditure. We used the expenditures of the households in the top 20% in each of the populations. So, again, comparing like with like. Um, we left out all of the frilly stuff, you know, like holidays and all of those sorts of things, because we thought, that, well, that's a bit discretionary. And we left out alcohol and tobacco spending, because we all know doctors don't spend on those sorts of things. Um, so we left out all of those sorts of things and we compared, okay, what does the household, the average household in the top 20%, so the average of the top 20%, what do they spend compared to the average household in the top 20% of New Zealand spend? Well, the average expenditure in Australia is, it's about 14% higher than New Zealand. One four, not four zero, one four. And don't forget the salary differential which was about, so that one four doesn't quite match the, the whatever it is, the, the 60 or the 40, whichever way you look at it. So there's the annual expenditure. So, okay, the annual expenditure is roughly about 70,000 a year. Taking out, it's not total because we took out all those discretionary frilly, frilly stuffs. Okay, so it's about 70,000 Austra in Australian dollars compared to the Australians that are about 82, roughly. And so you put the one next to the other and you put income and you divide it by spending and you got what you left and you can do as much as you can much as you can do to that vertical axis, but the picture looks the same. <laughs> I was trying to even out the picture and yeah. Okay, so the vertical axis is different on this graph. So the vertical axis on this graph is the step one, the entry level income compared to that spending that we have. And in New Zealand, the ratio is about 2.2, but in Aus the Australians' ranges from about 2.8 up to 3.6 in terms of income as a multiple of that average spending in the top 20% with some adjustments. Um, and, OK, so that's the bottom step. You compare it with the top step, and the picture doesn't change much. So the vertical axis changes again, but the picture is the same. So that's where I'm at in terms of the study that we put in front of you. Um, and as I noted um, in terms of in the report and in the comments um, that you asked me to make for a media release, and I, again, I didn't want to be an advocate for you, so again, I'm, you know, I am a living wage employer and I am actually very concerned about the people at the other end of the scale, but I am also concerned about wellbeing. Um, and it all goes together. And so I say, quite, there is no surprise that salaries for medical specialists are higher in Australia than here. No surprise, I knew that. The size of the gap, though, is astonishing. Starkly illustrated by noting that the top step in the New Zealand salary scale achieved after 15 annual increments is below that of the lowest entry level salary for a newly qualified specialist in Australia. 
Aye. And this bleak comparison of salaries is exacerbated by a range of more favourable non-salary benefits available to medical specialists in Australia. So I leave that with you. There are reasons to stay on this side of the Tasman. I don't want to see you all disappear. This is a great country we've got here. Um, my parents came here 70 odd years ago now and they stayed and I'm here also for a long time my family have lived here um, we, I won't say we used to I don't want to hark back to the good old days that my father keeps talking about <laughs> but bluntly we got a lot of work to do to restore this nation to what uh, my parents, to why my parents came here or chose to come here and why I still choose to stay here. I'll leave that with you. Norera, tenakoto, tenakoto, kia ora koutou, koutou.